I set my friends on fire was a staple on any emo and scene kids iPod back in the early 2000s. They have that in common with the Data Remember and Trey You and uh, Bring Me the Horizon. But what they don't have that the aforementioned bands do is a spot at the When We Were Young Festival. And this is no shade, guys. I absolutely love your music. In 2007, I Set My Friends on Fire released a cover of Crank That by Soldier Boy, and it went 2007 viral, springing them out of high school and into the spotlight. They went on in 2008 to release You Can't Spell Slaughter Without Laughter, a very humorous title, which featured the song Things That Rhyme With Orange. Again, a, another humorous title. They also made a song about sex education with Smosh, who was a very popular YouTube channel um, in the early 2000s, especially amongst emo and scene and sort of nerd culture. They made the video, and it was quite hilarious. It basically featured them in a playground with fake instruments singing about sperm making it to their eggs. Now, if you're beginning to sense a theme here, it might not come as much of a surprise that when the When We Were Young festival announced its lineup and... I said my friends on fire wasn't on it, they responded with, well, with memes. They replied to Live Nation's post about the event and the announcement with a series of comments, a few of which include, fine, we'll see you on the parking lot stage, which is a reference to Warp Tour parking lots where bands would sort of do a lot of guerrilla marketing and play songs and walk around with boombox and hand out demos and so on and so forth. They went on to say, whatever you're paying MCR, we'll do it for half, and we're going to meme ourselves onto this one way or another. And of course, this sparked a lot of memes. I think that they succeeded in that. Um, the internet kind of went ablaze with people just memeing. And what better way to spread information and ideas in the current day and age than to very simply meme, and these guys are honestly pros at it. They practically invented bands memeing their way into popularity. They're one of the earliest examples that I can certainly think of, and if not the earliest, certainly the best example of a band just memeing their way into popularity. And they did this all before the concept of memeing your way into popularity was a thought in someone's mind. These guys were pros at the internet before anyone else thought of being a pro at the internet. They even went on to edit the festival's announcement poster to include themselves on the list, which is really just quite funny. But it's what they did next that really just is an absolute five head move. Next tier, these guys are playing 4D chess and everyone else is playing fucking checkers type of move. Before we talk about that, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. I'm trying to get to that sweet 1,000 number that YouTube seems to love so much. So what did I Set My Friends on Fire do next? Well, the only logical thing, of course, buy the domain name when we were young and have it redirected to your band's Facebook page and then hold the domain hostage. So how could they have gotten away with this? Well, the festival's been using when we were young festival Dot com, But the names are so similar that it's had a lot of people confused, and not just people, bands as well. The main even retweeted and shared the fake URL, redirecting everyone right back to I Set My Friends on Fire's page. The guys in I Set My Friends on Fire very clearly stated that if Live Nation gave them a spot on the festival, they would give them the domain name, which I think is a pretty good deal. This whole thing was basically a free marketing scheme, not only for I Set My Friends on Fire, but when we were young. Now, I had checked Twitter whenever I got home from work right before I decided to record this video just to see if anything else had kind of developed, and a f something kind of interesting has. Uh, the band released a statement. So just to kind of summarize it for you, I'm going to read a couple lines here that I found really interesting and make a lot of sense within the context of everything that's happened. This was never about being on a festival that we didn't get invited to. This was all about finding a way to expose the fact that the big bad clique of agents and promoters that runs the industry isn't ever as powerful after all. We never actually cared about being on the festival, and if you look into it for two seconds, it should be pretty obvious that the tantrum was a joke. They basically admitted that everything that they were doing was memeing and really didn't expect anything to come out of it. Um, they went on to say that they got on the front page of Yahoo News within a f couple days, and they haven't had that much exposure in years. Our Spotify numbers doubled overnight. We've had over 20 million impressions across social media in the last week. 
Our tour coming up next week is the best-selling tour ticket-wise we've had since 2011, all from spending a couple bucks on a URL versus the five to six figures we would have had to spend on social media ads to get that reach. They went on to apologize for clogging up everyone's news feeds and um, basically saying that they know it's been annoying, but we hope that we made you laugh along the way. And I think that they have been able to do that. I think they've made everyone involved have a good little chuckle. I know that I certainly have had a really good time following this event over the past two or three days. So I guess the question remains is, will this work? Uh, we'll see. Will they end up getting on the festival? And I'd be very curious to see the backlash that this might have. I like to think that, you know, promoters won't shy away from working with them, but who's to say? They're basically calling out the big bad click of the music industry, and as these sorts of things go, that's not always the best idea. And sort of with all that in mind, the band goes on to say in their statement that yeah, we'll probably never have another AP article written about us, and we'll probably never get booked by Live Nation again, but that's fine, because those things weren't going to happen anyway. Too many people in this industry take themselves way too seriously, and at the end of the day, everyone needs to laugh a little more, especially in this day and age. I think in a lot of ways, they are very correct. A lot of people do take themselves very seriously, and it's kind of hard not to. And times have been tough. This has been a really difficult past two years for the entire world and the music industry especially because you can't tour, you're stuck in your house, you can't play shows. Um, so I agree. I do think that everyone needs to smile and laugh a little more. And I hope that this it, happening will maybe spark some of that to happen in people's lives. On a much lighter note and a more exciting note, their tour does start next week. They'll be touring through Florida and a couple of other southern states uh, through the rest of this month and next month. They've also got a spot on South by So What, which is a music festival in Texas that caters to a very similar crowd that when we were young does. With the tour selling as well as it has and being on South by So What and all the publicity that the guys have gotten, I really hope that we get to hear Caterpillar Sex, their third unreleased album that we've never gotten to hear. So do you think the memeing will work out for them? Do you think that this is something that's going to hurt them long run? Let me know in the comments. I'm genuinely curious. Um, I, I love I Set My Friends on Fire. They're amongst my favorite bands from that era. It's kind of nice seeing them in the media again, and I genuinely hope that it all pans out well for them. Thank you again so much for watching. If you've made it to this point, be sure to subscribe and like the video if you want to see more content like this, and I'll see you all in the next one.